Okay, so here's something I finished yesterday and I wanna show you, not exactly how I made this, but I wanna show you the, the basic techniques that I use to model these intricate pieces and create this um, little pack of just nice models that I can reuse in future projects. Basically my approach to modeling pieces of like a temple or fantasy scene like this. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into this and see where this goes. I, I think I might, uh, depending on what we get here, I might be able to give away a free pack of the stuff I make in this video. So we'll see. Um, I will put some text up if that happens or not. But anyways, let's just get into Blender and then I'll show you how I approach modeling. It's going to be pretty quick and dirty, but it's going to be, it's going to still look good and it's all going to be, you know, free stuff. Um, yeah. So when you start doing something like this, if you haven't modeled, uh, like a certain type of architecture or a certain style of object, um, it's always handy to have reference photos just so you can get a, a clearer idea of the direction you need to go in. Because right now it's like, I don't know, like it, sometimes it's just scary staring at the empty scene. So let's, um, I, before the video, I just went onto, onto Google and just typed in to the search bar, things like Aztec temple pillar, um, or like ancient Indian temple, just to get an idea of like some of the directions I could go. Um, so, if I just look through these, I've just got some stuff open that looked cool. Uh, so some, we can do something like this where it's just like, I don't know, intricate patterns on a pillar. Uh, definitely want to include some of these Aztec swirls maybe. Uh, some stuff like this on the border. We'll texture it too. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, could do like worn down ancient broken stuff, but might not worry about that. Um, just yeah, just cool, intricate pillars and stuff that I can use to create a temple scene in the future. So um, let's, I think let's start with one of these pillars and let's see where that goes. Um, and I might just open up like one reference just to get a basic idea. This one's kind of cool. Let's just go for something in this sort of style. It doesn't have to be a perfect copy of this. We're just going for like, I'm just going for a general fantasy pillar, so it, it doesn't need to look exactly like this style, but uh, this will just give me a direction to go in. That's mostly what this is for. So let's add a cube to start. Uh, maybe just edit mode. Oh, let's turn on uh, screencast keys. That's going to be important here. Okay, so let's go to edit mode, select everything, move it up one. I just want the origin to be at the bottom. I don't think that's going to matter because when I join all the objects together later, it won't even be there anymore. So whatever, just make a bit of room here. And if you really want it, you could get something like a pure ref, just a big reference board, and then have that on the side on a second monitor, or even you could drop like images into the blender image editor. If you really want something right there, I'm fine just like tabbing back and forth for this one. So that's what we're going to do. And this is always scary, like not knowing exactly where to start. So I'm just going to start doing stuff. It might not make sense at first, but once I figure out, um, like the kind of shape things need to be and how things are going to fit together, then it'll be a bit more smooth sailing than, um, it'll, it'll be a little bit rough at the beginning, but that's okay. So let's just do stuff until we find something that looks kind of cool. So right away, the first thing that's kind of, um, popping into my head is some sort of like staggered thing like this. So I'm just insetting, uh, just I to inset, uh, E to extrude. I guess I should move this up. I think I can move it. Ooh, not that. Um, how do I offset Y? There we go. Okay. So yeah, I just want, again, this does not need to be perfect. Uh, a lot of these ancient things aren't perfectly lined up anyway. So, uh, doesn't really matter if I'm like spot on or not. Anyways, inset, extrude, inset, extrude, and let's do one more just for good measure. Actually, that's going to be too thin. So I think we're good here. We'll just pull that face up. And maybe actually one more down here so we can just hit E, click, and then S, shift to Z to scale it up on the X and Y. Uh, so if you don't know, S, Z is going to scale it on the Z axis, but then if you hit shift Z, it'll do everything except the Z axis, which is the X and Y. So same goes for S, shift X. If I want to scale it on everything except the X axis, S, shift Y. Um, so that's going to be really useful for here. And then, yeah, you, you should know how to do like basic um, loop cuts, insets, um, and extrusions. That's basically what this is going to be. 
Okay, let's pull this. This feels a little bit weird, so let's pull this down a little bit. And let's get some ideas of like how we could do this. So I like this like layered pattern here. So we could do something like that at the bottom maybe. So let's pull that down. I want like a nice solid chunk at the bottom. So let's maybe add some loops. Uh, we could, if we want these to be separated, we can hit control B for bevel. If you get a bunch of them like this, just scroll down so you get one segment. And then something like that's gonna be good. E, extrude, S, shift Z, just pull that in a little bit to create some separation. Let's throw on a bevel modifier maybe. So just bevel modifier on the entire object. And again, this is still just one singular object for now. Um, so let's just apply the scale to get that out of the way. And then that should be an okay amount for now. I can change it, I can change it later if I want, but whatever. Something I've showed in, I think, the, one of the first videos I did, uh, which is very, very useful for fantasy stuff like this, is using bevels, which uh, if you switch over, like if you hit Control B, so it's not the modifier, it's the actual uh, bevel in edit mode, and then click, and then choose this menu over here where it says profile type, switch it over to custom, and then you can, uh, you can actually adjust the curve of what it's going to look like. It's not showing up until I add more segments in here, so you can see when I move the curve, that is gonna be reflected on the shape of this bevel. And you can, if you don't wanna do this, uh, if you don't wanna like screw with this, if you don't wanna mess with this curve here, you just choose a preset, um, com, what does it say, comic molding? Or com, I don't know how you say that. Uh, just choose one of these. Um, that's gonna just give you a pr good, good preset like this, or you just add a squiggly line and it's gonna look fine. Um, so let's just do that, cool. Done, and maybe just pull it down a little. Uh, let's actually, I like that better. Okay, and then there we go. So we've got, uh, I think that's too big. I don't actually want it that big, so let's just do a little bit. And if I really want, I can select all of these edges. Um, and that's just Alt-Tab, or sorry, Alt-Shift with, uh, we're in edge, edge select mode. So if you Alt-Click around an edge, uh, that'll just select the entire way around. So alt click does that. And then I just hold shift to select multiple edges. There we go. And then we can control B and do all of them if we want, but that might look a bit weird. Um, but I don't know, that's kind of fine for now. And let's do this top one because it feels like it should have that too. Uh, something like that is gonna be fine. It's uh, not gonna be like extremely high poly. It's not too bad, so whatever. And I might want to do that on all of these actually. So just boom. That might be a bit much. So we'll see. I might have to like redo this thing, but it's okay. Um, okay. Let's worry about this center part now because this, um, you know what? I'm actually going to undo that. Let's take this and delete it delete this as well and then let's just pull this up it just felt too like there's this was too wide compared to the middle it just kind of felt like uh, okay so let's scale it up a little bit okay now I think what I want to do is have some kind of intricate design in the middle uh, so like this middle section or like this kind of thing here so I think an inset is gonna work well there so let's do that inset and then just hit I again to inset the individual faces. And uh, I'll always apply the scale before you do this too, if it, if it doesn't look right. Okay, when we have something like this, when we have something like this, um, what you can do is to extrude them all inwards all at once. If you hit Alt-E, instead of just E, press uh, Alt-E, that'll bring up this menu. So extrude is just gonna be regular extrusion, but if you hit Alt-E and then do extrude faces along normals, now when I pull this in, uh, they'll extrude all along the direction that each face is facing. So you can hold shift to get more precise control here and then just pull that in slightly. I don't want to go too far. These like overlap, but just a little bit like that. Uh, maybe that's even too much. Let's just do that again. Something like that will be totally fine, I think. And then I think I want to do some of those Aztec like spiral things. I haven't really tried these, so let's just see what might work. I think a plane subdivided a bunch of times and then just with like a swirl 
pattern on it might be the best thing here, but we'll see. So I don't really know what I should be doing, but like this seems like the right choice. So I'm just using the uh, circle select thing here, holding shift and then just clicking around to create a spiral pattern. This feels like making like a Minecraft texture or something. Okay, let's uh, separate selection. So just hit P, brings up the separate menu. Selection separates what you have selected. So we can just take that. And we actually have two different spirals now. Uh, let's take this one, extrude it, and then I, it's, it's a little too perfect, so I might have to move some pieces around to like make it look more ancient, but we can worry about that a bit later. And I'll worry about this later too. Let's just uh, hide that for now. Make sure I'm still recording. Yes, everything's fine. Okay. So when I'm modeling pieces like this, I like to keep everything separated into different pieces. That, like all the pieces that make sense to hold separate until the end. I just like to keep them separate. So um, this thing, I'm just going to slap on here. Oops. Just slap it on there. And then it'll be its own like separate object for a little bit. And I might have to redo that. I think it's a bit too spirally, but we'll see. Okay. And should I throw on a different mat cap? Um, I, I don't like this cavity mask because it makes it look good in solid view, which means it might look better than you actually think it is. So it's like making, it's like giving a false sense that what you're making is actually good. So I'm going to take that off and <laughs> worry about that later. Um, so now since I added that custom bevel, our old bevel is actually not able to show up anymore, which is a bit sad, but it's probably fine. Uh, I can deal with that later, but whatever. Anyways, bevel this and let's do this shift S cursor to selected on this thing. So the cursor is right in the middle of this. Uh, let's set the pivot point to the 3D cursor and then let's just hit Alt D on this. I'm not, I haven't clicked yet, so it's just in Alt D. And then let's hit R Z 90 and then do that all, do that all in one action. So Alt D R Z 90 all in one action. And then what that's going to do is I can hit Shift R to repeat the last action. It'll repeat that and then Shift R again, just flips it around again. Um, so there we go. We've, now they're all linked too. So since I pressed Alt D, if I edit one, it's going to edit all of them. And uh, there we go. So if you hit Shift D, it doesn't do that, but Alt D does. Okay. So I think I want another spiral, but I want a one, uh, one less level of subdivision. So let's just subdivide that. Uh, so the last time was 10. Let's try like maybe not one, but like two or three less levels. So I think think this will be fine. So six levels, let's just try that. So if I just select these and then pull this in, yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay. So that is good. Let's separate selection again. I can just delete this and extrude that. That's a bit more as techy, I guess. Um, if I really want, I could like pull this out. Uh, yeah. And then Let's just rotate that 90 on the Y. So rotate 90. Uh, make sure I'm, I'm going to get off of this cursor thing here. So just put this on the median point. R, Y, 90. Uh, let's go negative. And then let's just put that over here. I'm, I might get rid of the first one, but we'll see. Uh, I don't know. So flip this around here. So just one or no, three, nine to flip it around. Let's go to wireframe so we can see a bit easier. And then I think this one I want to do like those four spot, like this kind of thing is kind of cool where it's four spirals coming together. That's kind of interesting. So it's going to have to be up here and then we need to Alt D and then S Y negative one. Just pull that over this way. And then again, Alt D and then S Z negative one. So it just flips it on the Z, pull that up to here. And then we can just, um, you hit effect only locations, scale that in this way if we really want. Okay, cool. And also I want the bevel in here. So let's control L and then copy modifiers. And did that work? I don't know. Let's apply the scale for all of these. 
Okay, and then we can just, if you hold, um, if I adjust one bevel, it, it'll just do for one, but if I hold Alt, it'll do it for all the selected ones. So Alt and Shift to get more control. So right there is good. Cool, and I messed up the, uh, whoops. Sorry, this was supposed to be the other way. Scale that by negative uh, one on the Z, Y, Z. Yeah, and then I don't know how I messed this up so bad, but S, Y, negative one. Uh, no, Z. Hang on, these are both messed up. Okay, let's just orient these properly. S, Y, negative one. Okay, we have to do them individually. So S, Y, minus one, S, Y, minus one. Okay, that is the right direction. So let's take this, whoops, these vertices here. And maybe let's pull that um, down this way. Yeah, that's kind of the shape that I wanted. Um, sure, why not? That's kind of cool. I like that. And then let's just bring that in so that it's uh, a bit more flush with this thing here. And it looks like one, oh, they're like sticking out a bit weird. So let's, to deal with that, let's hit um, set. Uh, that's just F3, by the way, to bring up the search menu. So set origin to geometry. Uh, and I recommend right clicking this actually and adding it to your quick favorites. And that way, anytime you want to do that command, you just hit Q and then origin to geometry and it does that. Okay. Now we can turn on effect only locations again, scale it on the X by zero, and then that will be all in perfectly in line on the X axis. Okay. So turn that off. And I think that's going to be fine there. And I don't want too much detail in here. I don't want it to be like right next to this thing because it's like, just, I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be just too much to look at and you won't be able to appreciate each individual pattern if it's all right next to each other. Uh, might be cool, but I, I have a feeling it's gonna be too much. I think I want like a separator or something in here. So let's actually add that right now. We can just do a cube. I could model it into this object. Like I could add loop cuts and do, do it that way, but it's I think it's going to be easier and just make more sense in the overall workflow to just add separate objects for those kinds of things. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's like a hard rule as to what you need to model into one single object versus what you should be adding in as their own individual objects. Um, it's kind of just whatever feels right. So right now this feels right. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Let's take this, um, select this face. Sometimes the, uh, alt click the edge doesn't work all the way around if it's the very top like this. So you can just select the faces and then control B, let's actually apply the scale first and then control B and just get a bit more detail in there. Nice. And could make it a bit thicker. So just select these bottom vertices and pull those down a little bit like that. I like that. I'll copy this over to the other sides in a second, but for now, just leave it on that. And I'm actually, uh, let's actually rotate this. So the camera's here. I'm just going to rotate this, um, which side are these things on? So, they're on the left side, so I'm just going to flip it this way. That's, let's do it from the cursor so it's centered. Put it back to median. Okay, so now when I hit one, it's just going to be from the front. And I'm actually going to backslash and just isolate this so the camera's not in the way too. So now, yeah, when I hit one, this will be on the front, so I don't have to worry about the uh, orientation at all. Okay, and I think this should be a bit lower. Like this thing is... Um, I think it makes sense to have this like evenly, like an evenly spaced edge along the side here. So let's just pull that down so that the distance here is the same as the distance here. Um, that's just what I'm thinking is going to look better. So I'm just going to do that. Pull this down to match somewhat. Doesn't need to be perfect. And I don't even think it's centered, but that's fine for now. Doesn't really matter that much. Okay. This thing. And the reason I haven't copied this thing right here over to the other sides is because I'm not really sure about the positioning and it's just easier to deal with one of them on one side versus four of them on four sides. Um, so let's just get this into a position that looks good on one side and then I'll deal with duplicating it around afterwards. Okay. And then I think I want another one of these so we can alt D this up like here. And then I'm not really sure what I want up here, but maybe I'm thinking just maybe another spiral. So let's just take this, pull it up take these. So you see how it's kind of annoying to go all the way around just to get, move one object, but whatever. 
And looks like right there is going to be about right. And then let's take this top edge, pull it up and just try and match that a little bit better. Okay, nice. And let's see, it might look weird if, I think this, I said I wanted a nice like solid chunk on the bottom, but this is, it's, it seems like it's a bit too solid and too thick. Like it just seems like it'd be, if I copy this to the top, like let's actually try that. If I just select uh, all this, one more, duplicate, scale negative one on the Z. I think it's gonna be, it just looks like too bulky on each side. So what I'm gonna do is, um, what was I gonna do? Oh, yeah, let's just delete two of these layers. So this, we can just take that and delete those vertices. Take this edge on the bottom, fill it with the face, F. And now if I copy that over the over to the top, it won't be so uh, bulky. Let's actually take these edges too. Control B and put that same bevel on those. Nice. Um, I guess I should bevel these edges. This is where the, if you try and aim the custom bevel so that it's not so, so intricate, you can actually leave the bevel modifier so it's not uh, so tiny. Uh, so that would have been better if I had done that properly, but um, whatever. In fact, maybe I should do that. I think I actually will, I will do that. Let's just recreate this thing, um, but do it better. So let's take these, delete them, uh, or let's just separate selection in case I wanna come back to that, we'll just hide it. And then, so see how, when, that, when the edge isn't being limited, the bevel can come out a lot more. So I wanna just keep it in that range or in a range that it's gonna look good. So let's just do this. Uh, again, and then extrude a little bit, extrude again, pull this inward so we can just extrude this thing, extrude, scale it in so that the bevel comes back, and something is limiting it, but I'm not sure what. Fill that with a face, apply scale. Um, Whatever, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. So do we want to do this bevel? I don't know. Uh, sometimes just adding less segments can help keep that bevel. Uh, so right there is gonna be like fine, I think. So yeah, that's that's fine. Eh, I kind of messed that up. Let's take this edge here too. So yeah, as long as there's enough where it's like stays on here, that's it's gonna be totally fine. Uh, and I should have done the bottom as well. Apply scale. Uh, that's very weird that it's not. Oh, I didn't have these selected. So there we go. And cool. Okay. I might. I think I want these a bit thicker too. So let's take this, pull it down. Take this, pull it down. Maybe this too. And this could actually come out a little bit. So we can uh, just select this uh, loop or this edge right here. Face select, alt click the edge, selects all the way around. And then spam control plus a couple of times to get uh, like something like that. And then just scale that up, I think one less. So boom, so it sticks out a little bit more. And that'll be fine, okay. And then now this thing seems like too thin, I think. So what I might do is, hmm. Like how big was this, uh, this thing? Yeah, it had like one more layer. So I think I might do that here. So it's just, uh, I guess, hmm, should I just duplicate this? It's a bit of a janky way to do it, but it's fine. Good enough. Um, so yeah, let's take that. I guess I could I could join it up if I really wanted to, but I don't care that much. Um, yeah, it's uh, fine. We could merge by distance and just do a quick fix. Let's see if that works. Just kind of, yeah, not worth it. It's it's kind of bad that this is like separated, but I don't really care that much. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's going to really cause any problems. So let's just take this hitting control plus, 
and let's just take that and let's actually shift D the entire thing in edit mode, scale it by negative one on the Z and then just put it right there and everything should be fine. So just line it up with the other, other vertices and then if we really want, we can, now we can do merge by distance and it should catch those four up there. So now it's like connected. Okay, um, that's fine for now. I think we should take these and make them a bit more pronounced by just extruding that out a little bit more. Cool, uh, or not extruding, but just scaling. Um, and also, if I apply the scale, it kind of messes it up, but I'll worry about that later. Uh, let's just convert that to a mesh. So when you convert something to a mesh, uh, so it's already a mesh, but if I convert it to a mesh again, what that does is it's gonna just apply all the modifiers for all the selected objects all at once. So I don't have to go in one by one apply these. So that's that's again on my quick favorites, but you can also just right click, convert to mesh. Okay, now I can apply the, uh, or let's just join it together actually. Apply scale, uh, origin to geometry, quick favorites. And now let's hit shift S cursor to select it on the big thing here. Uh, let's actually apply the scale before I do that. I think it's fine, but shift S cursor to selected. Let me save the project file so I don't lose everything. Uh, let's just go tutorials. Um, oh, I already have a folder here, so just delete that. Uh, okay, temple modeling. Mod modeling. Okay, cool. Now let's take this Shift S cursor to selected. Uh, let's just Alt D R Z ninety Shift R Shift R spins it around. Okay. So there we go. We got something. Um, now I can, I, what's nice about keeping this in like separate pieces is I can take any little chunk of this and use it in any of the other assets that I make in this file. So if I choose to like do some other variation of a pillar, I can just take those spirals, grab this, put it over. And then when I'm all done, I'll just duplicate all that, join them up accordingly, apply all the modifiers obviously, and then save those to the library, which I'll show you in a little bit here. So let's do this. Let's, let's add a little bit more detail here. It feels a bit plain still. So I think what I'm gonna do is, let's take this, uh, let's do shift R for, or uh, control R for a loop cut, uh, control B, bevel, and then alt E, extrude faces along normals, just pull that in, and maybe bevel these with one segment, just so there's a bit more softness in the edge there. And then I might do the same thing along here and here and here, and here, we'll see how that looks. So just alt click along here to select these edges. Let's uh, control B again, so just bevel, again, scroll to adjust the number of segments, so just one segment is gonna be good. Alt E, extrude faces along normals, pull that in just slightly like that. And I kinda like that, but I'm not super sure, but I kinda like it. Just adds a little bit more uh, detail and intricate bits. Um, so do I want to add more detail on this? I don't know. Let's see if I if I inset this, it might be cool. It might be cool if I just pull that out a little bit. Or maybe in? No, I think out. No, I think in actually is cool. So let's just move it in that way. And I actually should... Um, I should do that with all of these selected. So let's take all these faces here. Let's hit I, uh, just pull that just past where that spiral goes in and then just, uh, sorry, not E, but Alt E, extrude faces along normals again. Boom, and then we can take this, whoops, take these uh, edges here. So Alt click these and then Control B, just one segment bevel just to add, make it a little bit softer. And then this, I'm just gonna go into edit mode, scale it up on the X, and let's not do it from the cursor, let's do it from the median point. Uh, scale it up on the X, and move it on the X, just so it, uh, they all are getting edited together. Remember, I pressed Alt D on these, so I just, uh, when I edit one, it's gonna edit all of them all at once. Cool, and I think same with this, because this might be floating now, so let's just take, uh, let's just go to the, the top view, take all these, and then just line that up with where it, Seems like it should be. I think that's good. And I'm, I might actually pull that in a little bit more. Um, 
yeah. Let's see. I think that's that's a good level right there. And then if I really want to make this very, very intricate, I could do like um, one of these, not spirals, but like square pattern things. I don't know what these are called, but this thing here. So it's going to be like square, let's delete, or uh, just a cube, delete those faces. So it's just the, the edges here. Just uh, Alt E, extrude faces along normals on this thing. Uh, just pull that in. I might have to recalculate normal because I extruded it inwards instead of outwards. So let's just hit Shift N to make sure it's okay. And then duplicate that, scale it. I can take this inner edge, scale it again, Shift Y, S, Shift Y, I mean. So just so that the thickness of this is the same as this, roughly. Uh, and then again, Control L, Shift D, S, Shift Y. Uh, just making sure all these distances are relatively similar. Uh, right, so if this is like way smaller, it looks kind of weird, but if I scale this down so that the thickness of this bar here is like the same as this and this, it's gonna just look a bit more nice in this case. Uh, so yeah, not a spiral, but just a different interesting little pattern that I can just plop in here. Uh, maybe just kind of put it here so that the distance here and here is kind of all flush. Not really sure about that, but oops, might be nice there. Slap it in there. And then we could mirror this uh, if we want to just quickly, oops, not mask, mirror on this object, Y and Z, not X. Uh, let's apply scale. And I should set the origin to the geometry for this one actually. And I don't know why it's not going on the Z. I think I might have to apply the rotation. Uh, so yeah, there we go, X. Z, hmm, Z is not working for some reason, even though it's, it should be in the middle. Oh, there we go. Apply scale, set origin to geometry, and now the mirror works. So yeah, that's just based off of, the mirror modifier is just based off of the origin point of the object you have selected. So what I did is I, um, on the mirror, it's actually not mirroring off of itself, it's mirroring off of, um, if you hit, mirror object, make the object that middle pillar, that cube, that, that will just mirror it based off the position of this thing. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that, but it, I think it's kind of fine. So I could, I could like squeeze it in there like that. It might be actually kind of nice. And I might want a little bit more intricacy here. So we could just do a, a cube, scale it up. Scale it down and S shift Z. Uh, maybe a little bit more actually, or a little bit less rather. Just put that there. I want it to match the thickness of this. Again, we can mirror. Mirror is also on my quick favorites. So uh, when you add the mirror modifier, you just right click and then add to quick favorites. So Q mirror or mirror rather. Uh, set it to this object again, and then we can do Z also. So it's down there. And do I want to do anything with that or is it just a basic cube fine? I think we should do something. I'm not sure what though. Maybe just some, um, let's do some basic like insets. So let's just take a square, just alternate these. Uh, let's actually, let's do one more of those. So I had this many, let's go one more and then scale it in uh, and then just alternate these, whoops, you couldn't see that. Pull those out and then bevel, let's apply the scale. Bevel that, maybe a little bit of that. Scroll up to get that custom bevel back on a little bit. And maybe just like this even. Or just pull this way in a bit tighter. I kind of like that. Uh, maybe let's do two of them side by side, so I don't know. Shift D the entire thing in edit mode. It can be the same object, it's fine. Origin back to the geometry and then just pull it over. I don't actually mind that. I don't really know if that is super, um, like if that's really what Aztec architecture looks like, but again, it's it's more just, this is more just gonna be like a fantasy made up temple. So it doesn't, I'm not super concerned with like the actual style of architecture. It just needs to look cool. So I kind of like it, so I'm gonna keep it. Okay, it doesn't need to be too intricate. Um, like if, if the whole thing is just pure detail, it's a bit hard to look at sometimes. So 
let's get like a good amount of detail and then balance it out with like plain areas like this, uh, which is nice. Even these, these spiral things here are like pretty easy to look at. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind, like you want to have a nice balance of detail where it's like a good level, but not too much where it's like just painful to look at, but it's still enough where it's interesting and intricate and like visually pleasing. Okay. Let's take these and copy them over to the other sides too. Let's hit uh, object in data. Oh, so what that is, is if you search for um, make single user object and data, this one, that will unlink it from the other objects. So remember how I pressed Alt D. Um, that will just, it, when you click this button, it's as if you pressed Shift D on the object instead of Alt D. I don't think there's any copies of it, but if there were copies, I would use this setting. That's also on my quick favorites. So Q object and data right there. I always do that just to make sure before I apply any modifiers or anything like that, because you can see, let's do a quick demonstration. If I Alt D this, so let's take one, let's just ignore everything else. Take this one thing here. I'm going to press Alt D, move that over. And then I'm going to apply the uh, mirror. Um, oh, it won't even let me. Okay. Whatever, who cares about that demonstration? Let's just, you get the point. Um, let's convert this to a mesh and let's control J. We don't need, to, don't need to control J. Set the uh, pivot point to the cursor. Let's hit uh, Shift S on the main pillar, cursor to selection. And then let's take this Alt D R Z 90, Shift R, Shift R, spins it around all sides. I don't actually know how I feel about this anymore. Um, I might, to fix that, might just pull that in like this. And then that kind of makes it look better. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's all separate objects. I'm going to move on to a different object and actually come back to it later. So it's not a big deal right now. Uh, it's a little messy here how this is overlapping weirdly. But I think it will be fine. Um, I guess I could like move it over in edit mode so it affects all of them. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be fine right there. If I wanted, I could maybe flip it around uh, median point, one eighty, and then the spiral is like it's like an empty space here to go into the spiral. I don't know, it just seems like it makes more sense. Cool. And then does this need to be down here? This might need to be here. I don't know. Let's see. It doesn't need to be there, although. That's fine. Eh, it's kind of weird though. Okay. This is good enough for now. I think um, if I just go to render view, it just gives like a nice, nice uh, little amount of detail to the side. I might want to make these a bit more small and intricate and like detailed, but we'll see what I want to do with that. Actually, let's do it right now. Let's, uh, yeah, it just looked a bit weird. So let's just pull that in like this. Um, and then I don't, I don't know what else to do. Like maybe just duplicate uh, this thing down, scale it on the Z, maybe scale it S shift Z. Just put it right there. I think that's fine. Just fills in the empty space a little bit. That's all right. Okay. What else do we need to do? Oh, I should do it up here as well. So I'll D that up here. Just match where I put it right there. Okay, cool. Okay, I like this a lot. This would look very nice inside of like some fantasy temple or something. Let's take let's check back with our reference photos and then um, get some more ideas of like some of the stuff you could do. I could do a circular one, but it's gonna be kind of annoying. So I don't really know if you feel like doing that, and I don't think it's that much cooler where it's like worth the extra effort. It wouldn't be too bad, but it's just like I don't know if I want to do that right now. Um, could do some stuff like this. These uh, ancient Indian temples are really, really crazy. These are so cool. Um, just yeah, some these they're so so intricate and just have so many layers. It's just um, very, very interesting architecture. So I could do something like this maybe. Uh, could do some. I don't know. I don't even know what this is, but. Maybe some sort of piece like this might be nice. I've been uh, photo scanning objects around the house, so I could chuck in like some little statue. Uh, that might be cool. 
Okay, I think I want to do just some little piece like that. Um, maybe like a kind of a room, just like some weird elevated room. I don't really know if that makes sense, but I think it would look cool. So I'm gonna just gonna do it. Um, so yeah, let's do, let's take this, control L, uh, no, not control L. Let's come here and I can actually L on this one because it's separated. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not separated, okay. We have to select this manually, so just select that. Expand, expand, and Shift D, or separate selection. Okay, and that will be a nice base for us. So it's just origin to geometry. Scale that up by two, and then just plop it right there. And I'm gonna come back to this thing later. It's all separate objects, so I can just take pieces and use it for the next thing I'm making. Uh, and let's just copy location here, actually. Just pull this up. Pull this up here, and yeah, we want some. I don't. I don't think I want this on like a um, like a carriage, like on wheels being pulled by stuff. But something like this, where it's just like a room that you could go in, that might be really cool. So let's just do that. And for this one, I might not keep it a cube as well. Like this has, it's not just like a square. It's like there's pieces that stick out like on each side. So we could do something like that. Might be nice. Um, I don't know what the best way to do that would be. Maybe just add some of these, like just scale that up like this. And then take these and like extrude those out. So Alt E extrude faces along normals. Just pull that out like that. That might be nice. And then this will give us a nice um, starting point for our model. Let's take uh, this thing and just fill a face in the top because um, just kind of bugging me. Okay, so let's see here. Let's pull this out a little bit. Um, what do I want? Something like this is gonna be... Okay, so let's get these pillars I'll worry about after. All the intricate details I'll worry about after. Let's just get the main shape of this type of thing. Not, not an exact copy, but like this style of thing, roughly right. So, um, I, uh, yeah, just get the overall bigger shapes out of the way first. Um, so I think what I want is like this thing a little lower. Let's extrude this and then Alt E extrude faces along normals. Just look how nicely that just pulls that out. Uh, yeah, nice. And then I could even do one more where if we just take uh, Shift G normal, or actually it's not do normal, but Shift G co-planner. Um, extrude. Select this edge here, Alt E, extrude faces along normals, and just pull that out. The top is getting kind of ugly, but that doesn't matter. You're not going to see that, so who cares? And I could just Shift G Co Planner again, pull that down a little bit, and maybe just expand the selection so it's all the way down here. And I think I made that a little too big, so let's just do that. Cool. And then let's take this edge, this edge, apply scale, Control B, and make a few more segments, and then look at that. Lovely. Maybe one on the top too. Uh, a little bit smaller though. That's pretty nice. And then, what else do we need here? How do the corners look? I can't really see them, so it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. Um, I could bevel this like that, but, ooh, that might actually be cool. In fact, let's do that. Select all of these edges, and Control B, with that custom bevel, and that is pretty nice. Um, if I add a bevel modifier, is it gonna do anything? Yes, it is doing something, so that's always nice. And let's just turn it down a little, so it's like half of that 0 0.0, what was that, 0 0.01, so 0 0.005, half of that, just for a little bit more softness, so it's not such a harsh edge. Okay, now, I think I might want that on the bottom too, like it kind of goes outwards. Um, but it doesn't just copy the top, it goes like, hmm. Also, what does this look like if I do this? I do not like that, okay. Uh, I could extrude that in bevel if I really wanted.
You know what I might do is just take this, duplicate the entire thing, scale it around, and just make a little variation of it. So that could be like right here maybe, and then another one right here, uh, just for something. I don't really know what this is meant to be, but just something there. And we're like mixing Indian and Aztec styles, but it, you know, it's fine for what we're doing here. Um, so maybe just, I just want some sort of thing here. So I'm just moving pieces around. I don't know if I'll actually keep these, but we'll see. Um, maybe one more, but just scale it like this way. Instead of scaling it on the, um, on the X, which is going to like shrink the sides, I might just want to take these vertices and pull them out. Clear object and data because it's uh, linked to the other one. And I didn't mean to, I, I meant to not have this, um, I meant to keep the other one there. Let's actually mirror this on here. Mirror, object, this thing, done. Cool, we can scale it up a little bit. Uh, maybe take these and just pull that out like this much. No, doesn't matter, just kind of go outwards, origin to geometry. And let's just center that and I don't know, like just something like that's gonna be fine. I, th I think it'll be, that'll be good. Okay, and then let's do those like weird pillar thingies. Or maybe one more layer, actually. Yeah. Um, cool. And we could do Alt D SZ minus one and just kind of put that right there. Maybe just pull this in slightly so it's in the right spot. Uh, okay, let's do a little pillar here. So just add a cube, scale it down. Again, that's an object mode, not an edit mode, just keeping the things separated that seem like they should be separate objects for now. And we'll join them all together later. Uh, so let's do, I don't know, inset, extrude, maybe not that inset. Ooh, maybe like a little thing like this. Maybe scale that up, a little thing here. Um, maybe duplicate this, maybe not though. Maybe just, oh, let's just mirror it actually. So Q, mirror, whoops, not auto smooth, mirror, no. Mirror on the Z, and let's actually pull this down, turn on clipping, connect it up, and then just move it up in object mode. And let's see, where do we want this? I wish this was like a bit more out here. Maybe tuck it in this way. I don't know. This is like kind of in the way. I guess I could take this and like duplicate this up, scale negative one, and then just make it like a really tiny version just so it's uh, has something else to sit off of. So now this is straying a bit further away from my reference photos than uh, I planned, but it's fine. Like it's what I'm doing here is just trying to make a thing that's cool, not necessarily perfectly replicate ancient Indian architecture. So I don't really care if it looks a bit not like my reference, but um, as long as it's going in a cool direction, I'm totally happy. So let's just deal with this. And okay, we need to make this look actually good. So let's just take these, pull it in, take this bevel, take this bevel with one segment, Alt E, extrude faces along normals, and just tuck that in there, yep, S, Shift, Z, just a little bit more. You could bevel these a little bit with one segment, and that's kind of nice. Don't really know what it is, but let's do a loop here, make it a little thin thing, extrude, scale, so there's something in the middle, and I kind of like that. Let's do one more loop uh, right in the middle of this, Control B, Alt E, extrude faces along normals, Pull that in. I should apply the scale and just take these edges. Control B just for something a little bit nicer. Okay, now we can span this pillar around. Let's actually mirror that again, but just on this and X and Y. So it's on all four sides now. And I should do that with all of these. So X, Y, uh, Y. And I should copy 
or control LP for copy modifiers, but then just turn off the uh, X because the X is this way. So X off, but Y on. And then same thing with this, turn on Y and then copy this modifier. So it's on this, oops, uh, control LP. What did I just press? No idea, whatever, everything's fine. Okay, this is missing, so Y, and I think that's everything. No, nope, this thing. Control LP on this thing, so there we go. Okay, cool, so we have this now. And since these are mirrored, I can just Alt-D it along and just put it wherever it makes sense. So let's just put some of them here. This is not centered, which is not uh, good. Just pull that into the middle. Cool. And let's just pull this in this way. And then maybe in the middle here, let's take this Shift D on the X. And then um, let's take out the middle part. So just delete those. And yeah, put a face here. It's kind of nice. Maybe a bit. Uh, I don't really like how like long uh, these things are, so let's just see if we can fix all these at once. So let's take this actually. Oh yeah, I just wanna scale this down a bit. So, uh, that did not work well. Okay, this, this, and all of this. SZ, let's do 0.5 even, and then just pull that down so it's like that. That's a bit more like what I wanted, cool. And that's nice having this double mirror setup. So if I just edit one little thing here, it is perfectly symmetrical on all the sides that I want. Uh, so it's mirrored vertically and I guess I didn't need uh, two mirror modifiers. I just needed X, Y, and Z, but the Z's on this one, so whatever. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's take this thing and put it around more. So maybe Shift D, put it over here. Uh, So what's happening with this? Oh, mirror object is turned off for some reason. Okay. Um, oh, that's kind of annoying. So we have to, let's worry about the Z mirror later. I'll just put it like over here. Let's just scale it negative one on the Z. And I'm just gonna put it in all the places that seem like they should have a little thingy, thingy here. So like right there, right here. And right here, just kind of eyeballing it, seeing like what is gonna look good. So I don't know, that's fine. Let's maybe make that a little more tucked in. And then I could even Alt-D that over here. Let's take this off and just use an array. Uh, just flip it this way, turn this up, turn this up. Uh, yeah, like whatever. And that fits pretty well. And anything else? Let's mirror that on the uh, X. Yeah, X. So, boom. And then I want some kind of doorway, archway thing over here. Let's take this, Alt-D. Um, just put that like here maybe. This looks like a honeycomb or something, so don't want to use like too many of these, but whatever. I can just hit clear object and data and then take the bottom and then like just rearrange that however I want and then just like add loops to add uh, detail. Control B on these loops, Alt E, extrude faces along normals, boom, good enough. And same thing here. Uh, I can just pull this down. Yeah, like there. I don't know. And then Alt D Z S Z negative one. Pull this up. And do I want another one of these? Maybe we'll see. Yeah, that's kind of cool there actually. And that fits pretty well in there. Just pull that down so it's even. And nice. Okay, and then let's do a, a little doorway here. So just inset, extrude, delete the face. Cool. And I don't like how 
thick uh, this stuff is, but maybe it just needs like two of these or maybe like four of these. So Alt D X, just like kind of put another one there. I don't mind that. Uh, but I would like if it was further over like this way. So move it over like this. Yeah. And am I getting everything I need to get? Yes, I think I'm good. So that's probably fine right there. Nice. I'm not worrying about the inside because you probably won't see that at all. Um, so who cares about it? If I really need to do something, I could just put a cube on the inside. Um, okay. What else can I add to this? More, more intricate little pieces would be cool. Uh, but I'm not really sure where to go with that. Maybe some Aztec spirals. I don't know. Might be fine, actually. I don't know. Let's just see. How does it look if I bring this thing in? Shift D, Shift S, K for, uh, if you put the cursor, like shift right click and then hit shift S and then um, selection to cursor, keep offset. That just shift S, K just transports the selected object to the cursor. This is really useful for just doing that. Uh, shift S, K. Okay. Anyways, pull that out. A little bit weird having like a big Aztec symbol, but uh, I think it might be cool. So let's just chuck it in there, mirror that. And you see how when you're modeling stuff like this, it really is just adding a bunch of simple pieces together to create something that looks more complex when you look at the overall shape. Like if you try to do all this in one single object, that would be pretty tough. Um, but when you break it down into singular objects that are just basically cubes with extrusions and bevels, all of a sudden it becomes a lot more simple and easy to understand how you could create some, some really complex thing like this. And then it goes a step even further when you have a bunch of models that you already made or downloaded that are full of complexity. And then you combine those in the same way to create a full scene that looks super, super complex. Um, but really it's just taking those, those big chunks of like Lego pieces you already made, slapping those together in the same way that I'm doing with like smaller pieces to create the, the pieces here. It's the same process when you're creating a full scene. It's just that like, um, yeah, like when you break it down to the individual pieces, it all of a sudden, like, it, it's not so daunting when you look at something like this. At least that's what I hope is uh, what I am showing here. Let's just take this thing and just put it over here too, because I think it's gonna be cool there. Lovely. Let's take this and just put it on the corner. Um, I think that would be kind of nice here. And then I want it to be bigger. So clear object and data. So it doesn't affect the other ones when I move it around. Just pull that down there and then just kind of line it up. Yeah, nice. That's pretty nice. Um, maybe even scale it up by two. Do I want to do that? Kind of like that. It's kind of cool. And then maybe just pull it a bit further out. Uh, do I want to bevel that? Sure. Maybe just uh, let's take these four edges and this. And uh, let's just bevel that. And I guess I can do these ones too. Why not? Let's just take these. Boom. Bevel. Uh, don't go so much that it starts that it starts glitching out, but just a little bit enough to where like that is nice. Just so that it's not such a hard edge. Um, I don't think that'll be that big of a deal, but whatever. And then in here we have room for something. I could use like a photo scanned um, statue. So let's try that. Uh, objects. Uh, what is it? Uh, objects, miscellaneous, my photo scans. Uh, just put this like horse statue in here. This is just some random thing I found in the house and photo scanned. And I'm just going to chuck that in here. So just kind of put that right there. Actually, I could inset this, this uh, chunk right here. Maybe let's do that. Just inset, extrude that in a little bit. And I think I want this face a little bit higher. 
Uh, yeah, I could have done a better job, but whatever, that's fine there. Okay, now we have room for this thing to go like right there. I could add like multiple if I wanted. I don't really know what I'm doing with this, but um, yeah, who knows? I like whatever, something. I could put like a gargoyle in if I really want. It's kind of seems like it would be like too Western and like Gothic for this, but uh, yeah, let's not do that. Um, another figure I could put in there, but okay, that's a little, a little derpy. Maybe let's do just one one of these guys. Or it's just like, yeah. Okay. That looks like it belongs there somewhat. Okay, cool. Let's mirror that on this. Uh, mirror on this. On the Y axis, not the X. Okay, so we've got a decent amount of detail now. Um, I think the only thing that's lacking is like this thing up here, maybe some areas here, and then some of this. I think we could just add uh, maybe a loop here, a loop here, a loop here. Take these, Control B, Alt E, shoot faces along normals, boom, and then that's something. Uh, maybe here too. Same thing. And yeah, maybe one of these like over here. Feels like it should go there. And then, oh, I need to put these on the bottom too. So let's just take these. It's Alt D, Z, scale it by negative one on the Z. Just gonna put those here. But I don't know if it needs it because it looks a bit like spikes or something. So might not need it. Yeah, the trust shouldn't be there because it's like steps going up here. Uh, speaking of steps going up, I could add that, could add some stairs, but I don't know if I really want to. Uh, you know, what? let's just take this and maybe just delete this. I can just elevate it later at some other point if I want to. And that's kind of nice right there. I don't mind that at all. Could add another doorway there if I want it to be like two sided, but I think one's going to be fine. And I don't want to make this so high poly that I can't like duplicate it a bunch of times. So it's still low enough where it's like pretty easy to like go into edit mode and edit things and move it around but it's not like so crazy this i could decimate because i know that's going to be a, a bit annoying when um when it gets duplicated so we could do like 0 0.1 0 0.2 point two looks fine let's apply it and it still looks the texture is still like on here so it looks totally fine cool do i need to do anything else to this we could like really fill it up with detail if i like did this um, put it here. I don't really think that makes a difference though, so who cares? I think it's at a point where it's pretty good here. Um, before, before texturing at least. So yeah, let's leave this all separated into its individual objects as well. So I'm not joining it yet because if I want to add another thing, I can just take even more pieces now. I have even more like Lego pieces to work with to build my next object um, which maybe let's do some archway you know what yeah let's do one of these roofs one of these like mm, yeah I mean we could just do this make one layer duplicate it a bunch of times throw in some variation and then call it there I think okay let's try that so let's make one level um, I'm going to need more references for this because I'm not really sure where to go with this. So it's like a few levels, a break, a few levels, break, or just constantly all the way up. Um, yeah, so something like that will be fine, I think. Okay, uh, there's one shape that I really want in here, which is this shape. I don't know what you call this, but it's like a cube, and then it's like... Um, it's like this thing is pulled down here, but then there's like a bunch of, there's like an inset and then this, and then this with like proportional editing is like kind of pulled up. That's not quite the right shape. Uh, maybe sphere? Nope. Oh, this is not selected. No, nope. come on. Gee. Yeah, there we go. This kind of shape is in here quite a bit. Uh, so that might be cool. 
and then we could add more detail on top of that if we wanted. So like, add like let's just shade auto smooth, and then do like I don't know. Sh put the cursor here. Put a cube. Scale it down. Like mirror this all over here. Just boom X Y, or just Y only. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. Let's see what they did. Um, I don't know, just some like stacked weird thing. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but just take this, uh, just kind of like do a little miniature temple shape in this shape. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, I'm sure this will be fine. It's gonna be such a small detail, you won't even see this. So who cares, just take this, I don't know, pull it down, like median point, scale it up, pull this down, oh, take this, uh, L, bring it down, cool. Okay, I think that's gonna be good for now. And quick bevel, do we need to? Not really, but just slightly. And that's fine, I think. And I could just kind of do that. Oh, that's kind of bad though. Okay, we'll figure that out later. Let's uh, convert it to a, a mesh. Shift D R Z ninety, or set the origin to the geometry first. Alt D R Z ninety or Shift D whatever. And I could uh, just kind of do that. And control L object and data. Okay. And maybe just a couple of things. Good enough for now. And this didn't get it either. Oh, because oh, god damn it. Okay, how do I deal with this? Uh delete this here. Mirror again because I messed it up. I'm getting kind of tired. I should take a break. But okay, anyways, convert that to a mesh. And now it's on both. Okay, there we go. So we got this weird little shape that I can use a bunch of times in here, like this. And I just need to like mushroom it down a little bit. Let's take bevel. Oops, do not mean to do that. Bevel, apply scale, bevel this, inset this, pull it down, and shift G length, control B, done. Okay, let's take these and do I want to just scale it in a little so it's there? Sure. Let's join this up, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna join it up. Apply scale, origin to geometry, and we've got a little piece now. Okay, so that's this can be part of our roof here. Just chuck that on, on the corner. Mirror this on this, X, Y, cool. Pull this up, and I guess let's just do like a little apply scale, like uh, let's just do this and this, we're just gonna have like a bevel on it. So it's like that. And there we go. And then we can do like an inset, pull this up, bevel, control R, two loops, control B, one segment, Alt E, extrude face along normals. Could do the custom bevel here, but I don't know if it needs it. Maybe just on the bottom ones. Let's see what that looks like. I don't like that. Um, See what this is like. A little bit of that's fine. And there's one I missed here, this one. Whoops, this edge right here. Okay, good enough. And it just needs some variation in the middle, it seems like, eh, I don't care, I don't like these actually, let's undo that. What, what else should I put in the middle here? Like, they have some more, like, intricate, Design. Let's actually do this bevel one segment just to separate that. Uh, mm, pull that in. Maybe a couple of these, a couple of these. Inset these. Ooh, that's looking like an apartment building, but maybe we can bring it back. Just take these. Shift G length. Control B. That's fine. Let's take this, bevel this. That's fine, uh, except this needs it too. 
And then maybe more of these like mushroom, I don't even know what you call these things over here. And just convert that to a mesh, Alt D, R, Z, 90 with the origin, hang on, object and data, mesh, join, origin to geometry, rotate 90. Okay. Whew. Um, yeah, so that's like, that can be one layer. These can all be smaller, actually. I think they're too big. But it's all, okay, whatever. We're just going to run with that. Let's duplicate it up. Shift, or uh, scale it in with the origin to geometry, please. Except it's not working, so let's just put the cursor here, and that will help us. Okay, cursor is the is the uh, pivot point. Scale this. Oh, that should be like right there. Okay. So shift D S and that is going to yeah now it's oh are you kidding me okay okay what i'm going to do is object clear object and data make single user i mean um, convert to mesh control j origin to geometry oops let's apply scale and now origin to geometry now Put this on median point, and now I should be able to duplicate this without any issues. So let's just have it overhanging slightly. That looks better. There's some shading issues, but I think, there we go. And now we can just kind of do this a few times and get a decent result, I hope. So, I'm just gonna keep doing it until it starts to look bad, which uh, it's not quite looking terrible. Maybe one at the top, it's looking a bit more. Scale that in this way. I do not like how this looks now. Let's just hit Shift G A and e. whatever. That's probably fine. Maybe we can just do like another thing on top, like this. And now yeah, it's like fine-ish. Maybe take this thing, control L, or uh, all this, control L. No, sorry, just this, control L. And ooh, let's take all of this and duplicate, separate selection, origin to geometry, alt G, uh, or just copy location of this thing. And this can be like our top piece right here. And I just want to like extrude some stuff out here. Boom, boom, that's too much. And I think this can be like that, okay. Too much, a little bit, let's just scale it down, pull it in, cool. And I think all of them should have, it, should have that actually, let's do that on all of them, so extrude, extrude, uh, okay. Uh, did I not? Alt, why are they not linked duplicates? That's so annoying. Okay, control L, object and data. That's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, um, whatever. Let's take this, shift G, A, not working. So we need to go manually, select these four squares on the edge here. Boom. And let's just extrude that. Now it's doing it on all of them, lovely. Extrude it again, extrude it, or actually, we should probably do this. Extrude, scale it up on the individual origins. Uh, so S, Shift, Z. Extrude that up again. Inset, E, and then S, Shift, Z again. Nice. And then we can, I think that's fine. Actually, we can expand this uh, selection and just pull this down slightly, like right there. Okay. This is a bit much up here, so I don't really know what to do with this. Maybe just that. I don't know. That's like a bit, a little bit bad. Maybe let's like 
mess with the scale and rotation of some of these, just basically random, random transform. Um, just so it's not so uniform. Still not really helping, but I don't know. Good enough. This is not, this is not what I wanted actually. This is really not. Maybe I can just fix it like by doing this. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. It's a bit messy, but uh, I might not even use this piece. So there you go. It's like, might just get rid of that, honestly. I'm going to take a break and then we can move on to how to texture something like this. That might be fine, actually. I might be overthinking it. Yeah, honestly, that's kind of sick. I might just keep that in here. Okay, sure, why not? Could have done a better job. I should have paid more attention to the references and like done this properly, but um, it's it's good enough. It's, you know, it's fine. It looks cool on that thing, so I'm gonna keep it. Okay, let's take a break and then I'll come back and texture these. Okay, so I'm just gonna take all the pieces that I have here, because I have quite a few different um, just chunks and little pieces of individual things. I'm gonna take a bunch of those and then create a few variations of, uh, or like combine them in new ways to combine them in new ways to create new uh, pieces of models and like new assets. So, yeah, I'm just gonna speed through that. I'm not gonna show that because it's the same thing I've been doing. Just basically taking the existing pieces, adding a few unique things here and there, and then creating new models out of that. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Come back when it's finished, and then I'll show you how I'm going to texture all these and then set them up inside the asset browser. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so I just spent a few minutes taking the models that we already made here and then just kind of recombining them in different ways and making new objects. So you can see, I'll just start with the one here. This is just that, the first pillar I made, I just added in, uh, just duplicated some of the designs I made earlier, copied some extra pieces, like if I isolate this, it's just, or if I uh, pull this, just duplicated some cube and just added some extra edge loops and extrusions. Uh, and then same thing on the top, basically that's the same piece here. Um, just, yeah, just duplicating parts, adding edge loops, extruding parts in, extruding parts out, repeating patterns in different ways. And then there you go, variation. Uh, so then that's same thing I did over here. I just took, if you notice, this is this entire middle chunk here is the, the piece I made earlier, it's just this thing. And then I just did another roof over here. Same exact thing I just showed you before, but just uh, moving the pieces around slightly differently. Took that, put it on top, put some of those same pillars on the bottom. Uh, these, are, these are just like some random piece I just found and chucked it in here. Some like some random one of these or something that fills up the middle. And that's it. It's just the same things um, just duplicated around a bunch of times. Um, so then, at this point, I could you know keep doing this forever if I wanted. I could keep taking, there's enough little pieces here that we could combine them in pretty much an infinite number of different ways. And you can create an entire scene just out of like a few different pieces that you make like this. And this is why I like having them all separated into just the individual components like this, rather than joining them all together at this stage. Um, just because it's so easy to like, if I wanted to make a new thing, I can take this, I can take this thing, uh, let's just get this off or just choose a new object here. And I, I, it's so easy to just put something together that, you know, you just take all these other pieces, boom, and look at that, you know, do a bit of a better job than that, but you get the point. It's so easy to just go into all those other things you already made, grab a little thing here, you know, pull this piece off of this thing and then create something entirely new out of it. Super, super fast. And it all is cohesive and fits together in the same, um, space. So anyways, that's how I like to approach modeling. Now let's talk about texturing. Um, I think for this, I'm just gonna keep it simple. I pretty much always keep it simple, uh, even not on video, but in this one, I'm gonna keep it very simple. We're just gonna use one texture from textures.com. Uh, so I already have this open and I already searched temple. So I'm just gonna choose something here or ambient CG. Um, ambient CG is better if you want 4K textures, but I, if this doesn't have what I want, then I'll try textures.com and then basically just throw that on, do a cube projection and that's it. Uh, but let me show you how I 
now join these together and organize it into the library so that it's easy to use in the future. So sometimes when you have um, individual pieces like this, when you join them all together and then try and separate them later, if you say you want to take a little chunk of something, it's really annoying to go into this massive mesh and like find the little piece you wanted and separate it without messing everything up. So what I like to do when I'm joining them together is actually just create a backup of everything. So let's just select all the objects. Remember, they're all right now separated into their individual little pieces like this. Um, everything is a separate object. So what I want to do is just select all of those. Uh, let's just hit Shift D and we'll just move it over here. And then I'll just move that to a collection. Make sure you don't press Alt D when you do that. Press Shift D so that it's a different object. So anyways, take that back up. Same exact thing, just duplicated. Move to a collection, just M on the keyboard. Uh, let's hit new collection and we can just call it whatever, doesn't matter. And that way, if I want to go back in and take any more of those pieces and create new um, new models in the future, just using the, the chunks I made here, I can go in and do that very, very easily without worrying about like uh, going into edit mode and separating chunks and messing up everything. So what I'm going to do is just turn this off so I can just uncheck that. So now I can join these together however I want and do whatever I want. I still have a backup, but it's hidden, so it's out of the way. So let's um, let's start with this. So this is just a duplicate of the thing I made earlier, just with a different roof on it. So let's take this. Uh, so here's how I do it. I just go through each chunk of objects one by one that makes sense to be joined together. And then what I'll do is do, uh, let's search for, I already, I already showed you this command. So it's the uh, clear object and data. Again, if you don't know where that is, you can just search for it with F3, uh, clear object and data. And uh, I think it's just object and data. Um, sorry, I always mess up the setting. I think it's makes, what is it called? There we go. You search make single user, and then it's this one right here. Object relations, make single user, object and data. You can do it from the menu up here if you want. Uh, that's in my quick favorites. So again, right click, quick favorites. So anyways, object and data, because in case I pressed Alt D on any of these models in um, any of the other pieces here, I don't want to join them because it might accidentally join everything into those ones. So anyways, clear object and data. So they're all unique objects. Uh, convert it to a mesh to apply all modifiers to all selected objects all at once. And then we can just hit, uh, select this one maybe, and hit Control J, and there we go. And let's just shade auto smooth, apply the scale, and the origin is down here. So the origin point is going to show up wherever you had the last, whatever last object you had selected, whatever has the lighter selection. So what I might do, what I, what I usually do after this is, is you just, um, select it, hit uh, origin to geometry. Again, you can search for that in that F3 menu if you don't see it here. So set origin to geometry, and then let's turn on this setting right here, affect only origins. And then I can just come in here and pull the origin down. I'm just pressing G to grab, like you would grab the model. Once you have that setting on, it just affects only the origin point. So anyways, put that right there. And it's up to you if you want to texture it before or after you join it together. Um, maybe let's see what works better. Let's start texturing it right now. So at this point, I'll, I'll turn off that setting. Let's apply the scale, apply rotation. And this is, if I had a texture on, here, on this model, if I had it textured, it would be done, but it's not textured, so it's not quite done. But uh, this is how I like to put these into the asset browsers. You just, you know, apply all modifiers, apply scale, join together, uh, set the origin where you want it, and then now it's ready to go pretty much as it's just a neat little one singular, one single piece object right here. Okay, so let's let's do some texturing just to get that out of the way. Let's hop into material preview. So I had one statue in this model and that got transferred over to everything. So let's just get rid of that and then we're back to white. So let's hit new and then Let's go find a texture that might look cool. Um, so I guess we could try, let's try ambient CG because 
we're using kind of big-ish models, so we'll see if we can find a 4K texture. I might not be able to, and I don't really see. Maybe just search a uh, ancient. Nothing there. Ambient CG is a little bit limited. If I was uh, just doing this on my own, I would probably want to use Quixel Mega Scans. It's just way more variation, easier to use, lots more textures. So um, I would recommend that, but I can't actually, I can't, I'm not allowed to share Quixel Mega Scans. So um, we're doing this. It works, it's going to work fine now. But yeah, if I was not sharing the blend file, I would, I would use Quixel. Anyways, let's find something that's going to look cool. This is kind of cool. Something things with patterns sometimes work, sometimes don't. Um, so I, yeah, let's see. I I do want something with a normal map. Like I don't want to use a regular photo in this case because I do want that uh, that like bump that comes from the normal map to show up. So let's try this one. This looks kind of cool. Ancient temple floor. I th think this might work. It might not, but let's try it and see. So it's 1024 by 1024, not the best, but you know, it'll get the job done. Let's take the, okay, so albedo, normal, roughness, don't care about the metallic, ambient occlusion might be useful, and that's it. So let's just go, uh, I will just deal with that and come back when I have that texture in a folder one second. Okay, so I just downloaded the texture and I just dropped those four maps, the uh, albedo, roughness, normal, and AO, ambient occlusion, into this one folder. Just named it, put it in my textures.com folder. So it's right here. Um, now, let's import this. The quickest way is click on the principal trader, hit Control shift t as long as you had the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, so then just grab, what I just did there is I went to the Windows File Explorer because I already have this open. And you can actually drag and drop it anywhere into this Blender file view. And then it'll take you to that exact folder where you drop that file in. So let's just select these, hit import, and then it's on. So from here, let's just apply scale, go into edit mode, select all, and then U, and then Q project. And that will get the job done very quickly and nicely. So I probably have to scale it up because it looks a little bit like trash, especially like from this. It doesn't really make too much sense having like the tiles on top of the roof like that. So let's just select all and then scale it up by like four and let's just see what that looks like. Um, so this is what I mean where this texture might not work because it, it has this weird pattern. So I don't actually know if that's gonna look good. If I go into rendered view, we'll see. Like it looks kind of okay, but it, it's a bit weird. So um, another one might work better. So I might just go download another texture. Let's see if I scale this up. If it fixes it, I don't think it will, but you know what? That's actually not terrible. I kind of like that. So yeah, if you, it looks just kind of like, looks like brick. So it's, you know, it's fine. Okay, let's uh, just increase the elevation of this a little bit. So yeah, I would probably actually want to go in and swap this texture for something else, but um, you know, whatever. I could actually try something. I could get the displacement map. Let's try the height map and see if that helps us or not. Because the, the only reason I'm doing this is because the normal map just isn't really looking like what I wanted it to look like. And sometimes if you just use displacement without actually turning on displacement, um, I'll show you what I mean, but that might help in the normal strength a bit. So let's just see. So if I drop in the height map and then run it into displacement height, run that out here. Does that help us? Yeah, sort of a little bit. Maybe not so high on the scale. Just a little bit. Um, I think I need to go even lower, 0.01, add another zero, and I think that's fine. That adds a lot of detail. It looks kind of weird though, but when you have lighting on it like this, it, it will be fine, like most of the time. Um, like, it, yeah, if I full screen it and you really zoom in here, you can see 
it looks a bit weird. Like you can do a better job lining things up if you if you really want. But um, I'm intending for these to be used from like a medium to far distance. I'm not going for like a close up, so I don't really care if it's like it looks kind of janky up close. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I would I would recommend doing a better job and finding a more fitting texture than this random the first one I picked. Um, like you'd probably want to go through at least two or three and find the best one. But for this example, I don't really care. It looks fine for this case. So we're going with it and let's just keep going here. So what I could do is, well, let's go to material preview, uh, select. So these ones are still separated. I could hit control L material on this one and then apply here. Let's, uh, okay. We have to, we have to join it. So again, let's run through that same checklist as before. So it's clear object and data. Convert to mesh to apply on modifiers, join, uh, apply scale origin to geometry, and then unwrap it with a quick cube project. And let's just see what's happening. See, this is where we might run into some limitations on this pillar. Um, that's a bit bad. So let's let's go find another texture because that's a that's a little bit bad. Um, okay, something with like bigger chunks, I think, is going to be good. This might work. Just a basic brick, that's always fine. In fact, I might use that. Yesterday I did some models with this texture. Um, let's just take the, the basic rustic brick here. So again, download, we'll go albedo, we'll go height this time again. Normal, roughness, ambient occlusion, and that's it, okay. So I'll just organize this and come back when that's Okay, so let's take, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna take this off and then new and then same thing, click the principled control shift T and then let's just go back to that other folder, find that brick I just downloaded. Take all these maps, import that and there we go. Uh, and I think we need to just unwrap it again and scale it up by two. So yeah, I could spend more time like lining this up. In fact, I might take like, uh, if I just hit L on above any of these and just select the link to geometry, I might want to just change the offset of these so it doesn't look like just one cube projection like I did. So we'll just kind of move that around. Maybe scale it up. Maybe not. Um, so yeah, it's just moving the offset a little bit. And then same thing like on these, because it doesn't really make sense if there's like, a brick here that it would like continue over this pattern like th that's not really how it works so let's just offset them and that will make it look a little bit better so yeah as you can see texturing does not have to be complex if you just slap on one texture like me uh, so let's just move those along and yeah that's fine for now I maybe want to take this and then like rotate it 90 that might work better. And then that way the, the seams are like running the other way. It just kind of fits it a little nicer. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then again, for these, maybe I can just offset things a little bit just so that it's not, uh, well here, let's just take this control plus and then just kind of move it around. Maybe let's take this thing and like rotate it 90 uh, just cause I want those bricks. Let's do that on all of them actually just because I want the bricks to be like, here, that, that was too much. Uh, okay, well, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, anyways, what I was saying is I just want the bricks to like be rotated the right way on the texture. So we can just do that by taking this, rotate 90, boom. Same here, if I just kind of go in and take the areas I want. So, um, is it worth expanding this? Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, just rotate that 90. And there we go. It's it's a little messy, but maybe let's just actually unwrap that again. And just find a nice spot for it like that. Okay. I could rotate this. Uh, okay. Some, some little messiness in there, but it's fine. It's gonna be from far away, so whatever. And what else? Uh, I think I think this one's good now. So 
Oh, let's set the origin to the bottom. So again, origin to geometry, uh, affect only origins, turn that setting on just in options in object mode, pull that down to the very bottom. I, I just like it there, you can put it wherever you want, but I like it at the very bottom. So when I scale it down, it scales from there. Uh, let's just put that back here. So yeah, I like it scaling from there. It's just nicer for me, but do whatever you want. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to go and repeat that with all of these chunks here. And then when I have all these chunks, uh, like joined together and textured, I'll just save them all of the asset browser. So I'll just I'll show you how I do that. But I'll, I'll repeat that exact same process that I just showed you. And then I'll come back once that's all done and show you how to put this in the, put this in the browser. Okay, so I've gone and applied these two textures to all the models. So I have this one here, that first tile one, which I actually kind of really like on this one. Uh, it didn't work so well on some other models, so I just got another texture and then used that one here. But so sometimes, um, like in a few of these models, I it, it didn't really seem like these, uh, like some areas seem to work better with one texture and some areas seem to work better with the other texture. So I just put both textures on one model and then just assign them accordingly. So you just select any faces in edit mode, select the one you want and then just hit assign. So I, you could go in and spend a lot more time detailing this and getting all the textures to line up in the right spot and picking the right textures and, you know, going through that. But, um, you know, I didn't spend too much time, just lined everything up roughly right and then uh, said okay. But I think for what I'm, what I plan to use these for, for like medium to long distance, uh, renders like it's it's totally fine. It's not a problem at all. It's a little messy in some areas like I couldn't go in and fix that But you know, it's good enough um, So yeah, especially when you throw on lighting it, it looks looks totally fine in most cases So anyways, um, there's a couple things I want to do and there's a couple of cool tricks You can do with some of these textures. The first thing I want to show you is this uh, When you download the ambient occlusion map So it's this one right here when you press control shift T and you import the textures the ambient occlusion might not come plugged in, so you, you have to do this. So I'll show you on, I set it up on this one, but on this one I'll show you. You just take the base color, take a, a mix node, if you're in older versions of Blender, that's a mix RGB, change this over to color, drop that in here, and then we want ambient occlusion into the B slot, base color into the A slot, uh, and then just, instead of mix, we want to multiply, so that only the dark parts of that AO map get multiplied into our color. Just crank that up to whatever, it doesn't need to be all the way up, but something. And there we go. Now it's actually being multiplied in. It might be hard to see what this is doing, but you can see it just makes it a little darker and grungier. What I also want to do is add ambient occlusion over top of that using the ambient occlusion node. So the, this ambient occlusion is just for the texture. So it's just the ambient occlusion in the cracks of the texture itself but I want to add it onto where there's like crevices in the model, not just the texture. The way you do that, at least in cycles, is you take an ambient occlusion node, drop that in here. Uh, we don't need that many samples. More means slower, but less means faster and slightly worse, but you're not going to be able to tell, so this is fine. Let's duplicate that multiply or that mix RGB node. Just drop it in here. We can take the color from the AO, put it into slot B, and again, same thing that it's going to be multiplied into this. And I don't, uh, I don't want it to be. We can take the the AO out or or the color. But um, if you want to see what this is doing, you can Control Shift click on the ambient occlusion node. And then what I like to do is just take a color ramp, drop that in there, and then adjust exactly where this needs to get dialed in. So maybe a little bit less than the distance. Um, let's just see what it looks like all the way at 0.1, maybe a little bit more, maybe 0.3. And this, this value will change depending on whatever you made. So don't, don't just type in 0.3 and expect it to work perfectly. Uh, so this, boom, okay. So something like that will be good enough. Maybe let's go higher. Like, oh, that's not what I meant to do. That just glitched out. It's a bit laggy. Uh, so yeah, that's fine. And then if you want to get this back, you control shift click on the principal shader and give it a second. And then, yeah, just drop that into where this ambient occlusion runs into this node here. So right there. Okay. And I don't need it on full blast. I can just put that down to like 
0.75 or whatever, something like that will be good. And then it just makes things a little bit grungier in like all these areas where um, basically what it does is anytime there's like the mesh is like close to another part of the mesh, it just makes that area darker. So a little bit nicer for just adding some grunge and stuff. If you want to, you can take this and like select one of these colors. So if I just go in here, use the eyedropper, take some like brown kind of color here and then just make that a bit darker. That might blend in a bit better if it looks kind of fake and just like an ambient occlusion node. You just take some color that matches and just use that instead. Might work better. Uh, there's some hard edges in here that I could deal with or I could just not. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, anyways, the other thing I want to do is, well, let's, we can do, let's duplicate this, these three nodes here, the ambient occlusion setup into this other texture we have. There's only two textures I used. So just, uh, go to this one, paste, uh, just drop that in here and then run this into the bottom. And there we go. Much, much nicer. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to do was I want to match the color of this other texture. Like you see how there's some weird coloration happening here where it's like this texture doesn't quite match this one. It looks a little bit off. So I'm just going to fix that. Uh, another multiply node, just drop that in the third slot. And then we can just choose whatever like brown kind of color to uh, go into that. So something like that. And maybe even like take a RGB curves node, drop that in at the end. Um, maybe just pull that down slightly. And then something that also looks cool sometimes is messing with the specular slider. So by default, it's on 0.5, but if you drag it down to like, you know, 0.1 or less, sometimes it's like I go as low as like 0 0.001 sometimes just for a tiny bit that gives it a totally different like look. Um, so you can mess with that. Another thing you can do, I'll show you a cool trick. This is a little bit unrelated to what we're doing, but uh, looks kind of cool sometimes Let's set that to 0.1. And let me just bring this up to 0.1 on this one. So something you can do if you want, this is just a cool, this is just a cool little trick. If you want it to look like, I don't know, like limestone or some softer sandstone kind of material, you can actually um, just turn up the subsurface. So if I turn this up, it's going to look bad at first. But if I set two things, one, set the radius all to one. So it's just white um, and then set the color to be just the, we can just take the base color and then run that into the subsurface color. Uh, now, if I just turn it up very slightly, 0 0.005, uh, you can get some really cool, like soft looking stone materials just using that. So I really like the look of that. It just softens out all those edges and uh, it almost looks like a bevel, but it, not quite. It's just a bit like, I don't know, as if it's made out of like sandstone or something really, some really cool looking kind of material. I love that look. So I just wanted to show that uh, I might leave that on because it's pretty sick. And then I'll do the same thing here. So base color into the subsurface color, subsurface radius all to one. So it's, this is RGB. So it's red, green, blue, all set to one. So it's just white. And then subsurface point O or point O O five. If you go too high, it looks bad, but just on very, very slightly, it looks pretty cool sometimes. So, um, yeah, maybe, you can do point oh like oh seven five or something on this one, yeah. And then look at that, wonderful. That just yeah makes it look so much cooler um, sometimes. Anyways, I think that is going to be it for this one. That's a bit much on the subsurface. Let's take that down. Um, so yeah, now what I'll do is just go in here. Um, these are all set up, so I'm just going to select all these. Let's go into just select any one of them on the, the last one. doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is notice how all the origins are at the bottom. Um, so if I do individual origins, they're all rotating from that point right there. I just like that. So to save these, what I'll do is first of all, <clears throat> uh, we can, we can rename these. Uh, there's actually a function called, or if you type, if you hit F3 search for batch rename, you can just type in uh, one thing and it'll name it to all of them. So we can do set name and then check new and then name. We can just do a uh, temple piece. It doesn't really matter. Uh, well, let's call this like temple video. It doesn't matter. Just temple piece is fine. 
as long as you know what it is, uh, hit OK. What I, I'd re probably recommend like going in and call this like pillar, I call this archway, I call this roof, but for this example, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to use these, so I actually will do that. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did name them all accordingly. Uh, not that much different, but anyways, name them whatever you want, and then all you do to save these, um, if you download this blend file, this will all be already set up to this exact point right here. All you do is you apply the scale, apply the rotation. You can just check this box right here or apply rotation again. And now just right click, uh, make sure these are all selected. Right click, mark as asset. It's gonna do its thing. We can switch over to the asset browser, uh, head down to this file and then everything is in there. So. If you don't see the texture on these, uh, you can actually just go in here. As long as you, uh, if you don't see the texture, you, what you should do is just click the base color so it's selected in the shader editor like this. So you want it to be like outlined white like this. Uh, and then do that for any of the different textures you have in the scene. Just click on any object that has that texture and then just click it like this. And then what that means is when you save it to the asset browser, it'll use that map as the texture on here. So if you don't see, if it looks untextured, that, that's all you have to do to fix it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's save this. So to get it into my actual asset library, I have to do something and I have to hit file, save as, and then just save this in a location where my asset browser reads all of the files. So for me, I'll show you how I have it set up in a second. I'll just call this temple modeling uh, two, I guess. Uh, so then just save it here. So I have a big folder called scenes, uh, where I just save a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, most of my actual products are more organized than this, but this is just kind of a miscellaneous folder, my scenes folder. So I'm saving it there. Um, I guess I could save it into my asset packs and call this, uh, temple video asset pack. Sure. Temple, uh, so yeah, just save it anywhere in here, hit okay. And then all you have to do is go to the preferences. If you don't already have the, the location where your asset browser reads from set up, go down to file paths, uh, click the plus right here, and then just choose the folder that you saved it in. So I have that, I'll just find that scenes folder um, and then I'll just hit okay. And I've already done that. So it's already, it's already see, like that scenes folder is already in here. So now when I go back to user library, user library, which is, um, all of my assets, not just everything in the current file. I can just take all these, uh, open up objects, and I'll just drop it into whatever folder I want it to go in. So there we go. Um, I guess I will actually add a new one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that later. So anyways, you just drag these in, drop it in there. Uh, give it a second. Anyways, once you have that done, you just you can test it out by going to a new file. Uh, just drag and drop them in. So it's just find those things I just made. Uh, so here's one of those things. Boom, comes with textures and we're ready to go. So look at that. Okay, there we go. So yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned that modeling doesn't have to be super complicated. Creating your own assets doesn't need to be, uh, shouldn't be that intimidating after you watch this. Takes a bit of practice, but you know, I think it's worth getting good at, um, at least basic modeling. So yeah, if you want to download this, I'll just leave the first link in the description. You can just get this whole file for free, all, all the things I just made in this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.